For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. The year 2021 has been vital for the embattled country of Venezuela. The country has for years been the target of a sustained diplomatic and even violent offensive by the United States and its allies. The extensive sanctions regime imposed by these countries has had a disastrous impact on Venezuela and led to the deaths of tens of thousands and destroyed the quality of life. The US and its allies have also supported a far-right opposition in Venezuela, including a coup attempt by Juan Guaido in 2019. After years of such assaults, Venezuela has seen a turnaround this year. There has been greater engagement between the elected government of Nicolas Maduro and the opposition, a widely celebrated electoral process and developments at the global stage. Zoe Alexandra of People's Dispatch analyzes how this year has been for Venezuela. So as we're coming to the end of 2021, uh, one country which saw tremendous change and growth uh, was the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. So 2020, 2019, 2018, 2017 were very challenging years for Venezuela, um, starting with the you know, the campaign of sanctions that, of course, began, you know, in 2014, but intensified um, when Donald Trump was elected president of the United States. And he, under his leadership, the U.S., imposed a series of financial sanctions, of sanctions on oil production in Venezuela that had catastrophic impacts on the economy, had catastrophic impacts on human life, um, and on really all sectors of society and life in Venezuela. Of course, the goal of these sanctions was to destabilize the country, was to, um, you know, shake the legitimacy of the democratically elected government of Nicolas Maduro. And, you know, throughout these past couple of years, you know, it was, there was a very challenging economic situation. Um, you know, thousands of people did leave Venezuela. Um, the GDP dropped uh, you know, over 30%. Um, imports of food and medicine also saw a serious uh, decrease. Um, oil production, massive decrease. At the same time, you know, very high levels of inflation. Um, the devaluation of the currency was also really uncontrolled. And this year, 2021, is the first year that Venezuela is seeing a breath of fresh air, a a little bit of um, of stability, of economic stability, of political stability. People are finally starting to get back to um, you know a normal situation in Venezuela. Um, what they call uh, you know they were under an economic war, a siege. Um, this has started to let up, and there are two key factors of how this happened. Um, on one hand, um, of course, a very key element has to do with um, the continued resistance of the democratically elected government um, in terms of creating alternative economic partnerships, working with countries like Russia, working with countries like China, strengthening its relationship with Cuba, um, you know, the vaccine, buying of vaccines from Cuba was extremely important in terms of uh, getting a very high level of vaccination in Venezuela. Um, they also received a lot of uh, vaccines from these previously mentioned economic partners, Venezuela, um, sorry, Russia and China. Um, there were important economic agreements also made with Iran um, regarding their oil production. And so these uh, branching out and, you know, of course, all economic activity with the U.S. has essentially been cut off. But uh, when Venezuela was able to branch out, work with these other countries, these emerging economies, um, countries that are trying to promote this more uh, multilateral world, um, this has really served um, to help Venezuela rebound economically, to rebuild some several key aspects of industry, of infrastructure, and of course, their very important oil infrastructure. Another element, um, you know, in addition to this, uh, to the perseverance of the democratically elected government in pursuing other economic um, partnerships and other economic um, opportunities, um, is also the 
at this one, on one hand, the weakening of the political opposition of the far right opposition of Juan Guaido, the continued uh, kind of decline of him as a figure um, and the continued um, victories of the Chavismo, of uh, the uh, PESUV alliance, the Grand Patriotic Poll, the elections that were held on November 21st in Venezuela, the subnational elections where uh, you know, millions of Venezuelans were able to go to the polls to elect their mayors, to elect their governors, um, city council members. Uh, this, these elections not only saw a very high level of participation, about a 10% increase from the uh, prior year, but also it saw, you know, a massive landslide victory of Chavista forces of this great patriotic poll alliance and an almost complete defeat of the opposition. Um, they participated in these elections, which I'll get to in the next point of what's been another important development in the stabilization process. And um, it really showed that people do not believe in the project that they uh, are, have been presenting for the country, which is you know, essentially a non-project, a project that involves supporting the blockade, supporting the economic sanctions, and working against the best interests of the people. And so the third element in, um, of how Venezuela has been able to regain this level of stability, regain a sense of, um, you know, well-being again for the Venezuelan people, you know, breaking out of this, uh, this, you know, sense that they're under attack. The third element is the success of the negotiation proce process with the far right opposition in Mexico. Um, so this, there have been several attempts to um, you know, engage in a dialogue process with the opposition, you know, in these critical years in 2014 and 2017, this same far-right opposition um, engaged in several uh, different rounds of protest, um, largely with political goals, um, you know, not necessarily mobilizing for um, a certain economic measure, policy, um, a certain demand in that sense, but really um, with the sole purpose of overthrowing the democratically elected government of Nicolas Maduro. And, you know, during these protests, there were a lot of acts of violence. In 2017, uh, over 100 people were killed. And so in this process of political upheaval, political crisis, um, Venice, this Venezuelan government has attempted to engage in several instances of dialogue. Many of these have not been um, successful. And finally, this year in Mexico, the government and the opposition, um, including the far right opposition, for the first time just agreed to sit down with the government um, in a dialogue table in Mexico. And this was extremely important in terms of regaining the confidence of the Venezuelan people to show that after all this time, after all this crisis, that there is still possibility for people to, you know, resolve conflicts in peaceful means, in uh, in a dialogue, in engaging in conversation. And these dialogues were very important um, because they achieved a common understanding among the opposition and the government that in order for Venezuelans to live in peace, in order for Venezuelans to survive, the uh, unilaterally uh, imposed coercive measures by the United States must be lifted. And so one of the first calls of this of this um, dialogue between the opposition and the government was calling on the United States to lift sanctions um, to in order for the economic life in Venezuela to improve, for people to able to be able to engage in commerce, for there not to be so many restrictions and um, to really recover the oil production and many other elements of the economy. Another key achievement of this process was um, the participation of this far-right opposition sector, which had not participated since 2015 in electoral processes. Um, and so this year in November, on November 21st, in the previously um, mentioned electoral process, this far-right opposition did participate. As I mentioned, they did not, they were not successful in many cases. However, their participation in the process was an important boost of legitimacy to Venezuela's electoral system, which has been um, praised internationally because of its transparency. It's one of the first biometric voting systems in the entire continent. Um, however, it has been often 
uh, called by the United States and uh, the European Union as being um, fraudulent and many other aspects. Um, and in a final aspect of, you know, Venezuela's return to stability and, you know, even seeing economic growth, which it hadn't for many years, um, is also the regional reconfiguration. And so we're seeing a, in Bolivia, um, the coming to power of the progressive government of the movement towards socialism led by Luis Arce, um, the recent victory of Xiomara Castro, um, the re-election of Daniel Ortega, Nicaragua, um, the continuing uh, left and progressive projects across the continent, which gives more um, strength to Venezuela that had been previously isolated in a moment of uh, conservative counterattack against many countries in the region. And in the coming year with the um, looking like very positive outcome for Gustavo Petro in Colombia, um, Lula da Silva in Brazil, these have been the two strategic allies of the United States in its attacks against Venezuela, Colombia and Brazil. And, you know, with the popularity of these two candidates in these countries, which have been very important in this attack, this is also uh, a really important um, possibility for Venezuela. And that if there's a progressive government in Colombia, if there's a progressive government in Brazil, um, the entire region will uh, you know, be strengthened and Venezuela won't receive so much pressure from its neighbors and maybe even they will engage in cooperation. So looking at this year, looking at 2021, it's really been a tremendous year in terms of regaining some stability in Venezuela regaining the support and the trust of the people in a very, very trying time, a time of crisis, a time of a lot of upheaval. Um, and it's looking like 2022 will be even, uh, you know, a, another crucial year for Venezuela. A lot of important economic growth will be happening and we'll, of course, be staying tuned at People's Dispatch.